Hello, it's Diana from dianamarchand.com and I help women through the midlife phase and beyond deal with the changes that have gone on or are going on in your body, right? And that could be some of the symptoms that you've experienced or are experiencing like the weight gain, the brain fog, the memory problems, the hot flashes, the digestive problems, the headaches, um, all of the, the non-sleeping, like having problems sleeping, the of being of feeling over emotional, overstressed, overwhelmed, all of those things <laughs> that can go on in this phase of life. So today what I want to talk about is the things that I notice that women do not do when they're working through this phase and that if they do, it'll make it so much easier. So I worked with hundreds and hundreds of women in my programs and coaching, helping them through this phase with what to eat, decreasing the stress and working on the mindset, right? Really working on the whole person, the body, mind and spirit. All right. And if you are on Facebook, I have a free Facebook community for women over 40, Women Creating Healthy Lives. And that is where I hang out every single day, the most, do the most trainings, videos, recipes, recipe videos, uh, post pictures of what I eat during the day. I'll sometimes video what I'm, how I'm eating, like how I'm making my meal that day. And I just do that in that Facebook community. Uh, it's about 3,000 women at this time of the video. So come and join us. It is a fantastic, supportive, amazing place. And in the group, it is really positive. We just talk about the health and wellness of you. None of this other world's news or stuff that's going on at all. Okay, so it's a great place you can come. Positive, inspiration, motivation, and be around other women who are going through this phase and who have gone through it and just really want to work on feeling great now. All right, and becoming who they are, right? Lurking at who am I now as this person who's going through this phase and who do I choose to become because we are changing and that's what I want to talk about. So often women want to do the weight gain or they think I need to exercise like crazy now. I need to change what I'm eating, eat really super clean, maybe count calories, maybe um, restrict calories because I can't lose this weight, right? So your body is changing, has changed and what used to work does not work anymore. That's just the fact because your hormones are causing your body to act differently now. It metabolizes foods differently than it did when you were in your 20s, early 20s, 30s, and early 40s. Even the exercise needs to be different, okay? What I'm talking about in this video is other things that you may not know about or think about that can have a huge impact on how you feel and how you move through this phase and how you are when you end up in postmenopause. <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> mm. Because if you don't start taking care of yourself now, then your symptoms and the way you feel is not going to get better. And you probably will not lose the weight at all. You'll probably continue to gain the weight. And that's what I see over and over and over again with women. I see, <clears throat> I watch what they eat in coffee shops and restaurants, and then I see their weight, and I also can tell by the way they live their life, right? By the way they're living their life, that they haven't really changed it to, um, or modified it so that they begin to take really good care of themselves. So the first thing that I'm, and these are not in order, okay? There's no number one. I didn't put them in order. First one I'm talking about is decreasing stress. And you've heard me talk about this before. Decreasing stress is absolutely crucial. It could be number one, the number one most important thing to do. And it's one that many, many women avoid because maybe you too tell yourself, I just don't have time. Like I can't change the way my life is now. I don't even know how to rearrange it. Like I have all these commitments. I have all these people I have to take care of. I have all these things. I work. There's nothing I can do, right? And that's a lot of women think. But the thing is, that is something you've been saying over and over again for years. You have this pattern and develop the habits in the actual life around you that reflects that. It reflects your belief that everybody needs you, that there's nothing you can do, that you must do everything you're doing now, that you can't let go of everything or anything, right? And that it's too hard to change. So this is what's going on right now is that you just believe all of that is true, okay? And I'm here to tell you that no, it is not 
even though it may feel like it, okay? Even though it may feel so true, it is not. And this is absolutely crucial. You will not lose the weight if you continue having a lot of stress because stress causes your hormones to stay caught up in a loop where your body will not release the weight, okay? It can actually cause more weight gain. It also is responsible for maybe you not sleeping well. When cortisol is high, so that's a hormone that your stress response gives off a lot, your adrenal glands. When cortisol is high, your melatonin is low, okay? So if you don't decrease your stress, your melatonin is low, which means you have a harder time sleeping or staying asleep throughout the night. And as well, stress causes this worry, this fear, our nervous system to be constantly like vibrating, constantly feeling like we're being attacked over and over again. That definitely, definitely causes and makes worse the hormone fluctuations and changes and imbalances in your body. Okay, your body cannot come into balance if you are in consistent stress because stress secretes certain hormones too much of. So how can your body be more balanced if you're constantly over like dosing in, a, in cortisol and adrenaline and all those hormones, the stress hormones? It can't. Okay, so stress reduction. And I'm talking not just once a week or twice a week. I'm talking little things you can do throughout your day to decrease your stress even setting an alarm or something for every few hours to check in connect to your body do some good deep breathings just feeling yourself settle down shoulders back chest out your breath is one of the easiest and most effective ways to decrease stress and also grounding outside feet on the ground, feet on the grass, feet in the sand, whatever, or just visualizing the energy going down, down, down as you exhale, down into the center of the earth, connecting your whole physical energetic body to the center of the earth. Feel like you're grounding and growing roots and then inhaling the earth's energy back into your body and then exhaling right down again, feeling yourself sink down into the center of the earth. Okay, that'll help calm you down a lot. So in my programs and coachings, you learn all of these things that you can do simply every single day that will greatly reduce your stress response. And then your body can be in more balance, okay? And the other one, number two, time for you, making time to do things for you, putting yourself as a priority. And I know some women are like right away, they're like, but I just can't, there's no way. Or what comes up for you? is I'm, I'll be a bad person. I can't put myself as a priority because I seem selfish. Like, why should I put myself first be, before other people? The thing is, you have that confused. It is not you're going to ignore other people. You're just going to take care of you, right? So we got to stop the way all those thoughts that come to us because of the way we were raised, because of conditioning and society. However you got them, no, no, no. They are wrong. They never were right. You are not selfish. You need to put yourself as a priority. You cannot take care of other people if you're depleted, if you're sick, if you're drained, if you're fatigued, if you're exhausted, if you're tired, if you're super stressed, if you're super emotional, if you can't handle life, you certainly can't handle. And why should you? Anybody else's, right? It's your priority to take care of you the best you can. It is everybody else's priority to take care of themselves. Now, if you have an aging parent or a disabled child or something that needs extra help, that is different. But still, put yourself and away as a priority, and that means taking care of yourself. What do you need to do so that you yourself are feeling better physically, emotionally, energetically, you know, what type of body work, energetic work do you need? Uh, what type of uh, food, right? Eating the best foods. How about time for you? Your spiritual practices, things, uh, your faith practices, exercise, things like that. This is crucial because in midlife, your body is like hypersensitive and overstress and over like it feels things way more. So what you used to be able to handle in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, you can't really handle anymore. Not in the same way. Your body can't handle it in the same way. It doesn't mean something's wrong with you. 
it will pass. You will move through the crazy phase. And then once again, you will feel more balanced. But that's if you work with your body through this phase and help it and treat it well and feed it right and nourish it, body, mind and spirit, so that it will bring itself into better balance when the time comes. And throughout the whole thing, the whole journey, you will feel better. Okay. Number three is loving boundaries. And this is part of it. Time for yourself. This is setting powerful, loving boundaries. Boundaries do not have to mean negative or um, mean. And that's the way some women think of it is I will seem mean. I hate to say no. They're going to be mad at me. They're not going to understand. That is their problem. Remember, you are responsible for your happiness. They are responsible for their happiness. If their happiness is reliant on you doing things for them all the time, that's wrong. That's codependence. Codependency. That's wrong. You need to let them live their life, take care of themselves, and learn what that is like for them, and what that means for them. And this, you got to do the same. You got to do the same because your body speaks to you in symptoms. Feeling exhausted, tired, stressed, overworked, overstressed, over emotional, headachey, fatigued, achy, all of those things. Yes, there are your hormones at this phase, but also, yes, they are your energy, your energetic body telling you something's out of balance, something isn't right. You are too much one way. Not We need help, support, love, nutrition, this physical body. And your energetic body it needs all of that too okay really important so you need to be able to give loving boundaries to people like you know what <clears throat> right now i just need some extra time to me or i need know now that i need to take better care of myself because i haven't been feeling good so i'm going to choose to spend time on me doing things that make me feel good and i honor you and i think the most important thing you can do for yourself is to take care of you too and that's all you have to say to somebody number four Spiritual and soul practices, faith practices, whatever. Now, this can be like um, morning practices, and I'm not talking about getting up and going for a run or taking your dog for a walk. That's not really morning practice. I'm talking about you doing something specifically for you that brings you a, a feeling of peace, calm, joy, safety, and security within yourself, connecting to you, God, source, universe, all, because we are one. So, feeling more your connection to something larger than yourself. So if it's a faith you have or a religion, practicing that, feeling the safety, security, um, faith, belief, love, and trust in yourself and in a higher power and working on really feeling that right now, we need this way more than ever, okay? Because it's something that gives us a sense of stability and safety and trust and belief and faith within ourselves and a higher power that everything works out always. You know, it gets us away from this craziness, listening to the news, the, the spinning, the anxiety and the fear and the worry. And we are able to connect into something that's bigger that we are connected to know that we're always taken care of. We're always guided. We're always cared for. Okay. We are responsible for doing that for ourselves too. Right. Okay, so our spiritual soul practice, having a morning one and at least an evening one, two a day at least, right? Just having little could be 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something that you can do that helps to really um, solidify that within yourself, okay? Number five, personal growth. So I labeled it personal growth. It is kind of like soul practice. It'd be more into like discovering who you are now, who you are becoming, who would you like to become? Because when you enter this midlife phase, you are changing, right? It's like you wouldn't expect a toddler to act like a toddler when they're 12 years old. And you wouldn't expect a 17-year-old to act like and to do things like he was when he was 12 years old, right? Where we have these different phases of life. Well, we are being and changing and evolving all the time. So don't keep yourself stuck in the way you were in 20s, 30s and early 40s. Because that can keep you frustrated because you will see your body's changing. Things are changing. Your, your, you inside your soul, your spirit, your soul is actually changing. 
So when you try to keep your beliefs, your thoughts, your words, your practices, your habits, your behaviors and actions all the same, there's going to be a fight. There's going to be disease within your body because your soul evolution <clears throat> will want to continue to evolve and yet you're holding it back. So who you were as a mother raising your kids is different than you are now if your kids are grown. But maybe you're trying to still be that person or maybe you have no idea who you are anymore because you just don't know. It's like, who am I now without the mother label? So it's time for you to find out, right? And, um, and which is fabulous. You get to design. You get to like, okay, who am I really at my being? So it's just about remembering who you are really at your being. Um, what do I like about myself? What do I like to do? What things bring me joy? Rediscovering all that again and giving yourself permission to do those things again and to be you speak your voice, use your voice, say what you feel, say what's true to you, express yourself, right? And begin to learn that. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Listening to videos, YouTube, joining coaching groups, joining um, Facebook groups like mine or other Facebook groups that are specific to really what you, you're interested in or what you want to learn. And just being around people who are also doing things to discover themselves and to improve themselves, to get happier, more joyful, feel more on purpose in life. Maybe discover your purpose. Do something you're passionate about, right? Start doing that instead of binge watching Netflix because that only leaves you bland, feeling like something's off, life is boring, I'm uninspired, I'm unmotivated, I don't know what to do. And so you numb yourself with TV, food, and alcohol maybe, right? No, it's so fantastic that in midlife you can be open up a whole new world for yourself and something that's really amazing and maybe something you've always wanted to do or discover something new for you. So don't be close to that because that will really bring up your energy. You'll feel so much amazing. So amazing. Number six is more supplements and energy work. So what I meant by that is just what I worked out. Make sure you're getting in some really good supplements because in this midlife phase and beyond change, our body now we require more supplements. We require more nutrition, I should say. More minerals, more trace minerals, central fatty acids, good fats, good lean proteins, which are amino acids are the building blocks. So you want to make sure that you are not only eating good healthy foods, but that you are super powders and supplements that support your body because you probably don't eat good enough consistently, okay? So even just adding some green powder blends in your smoothies, things like that. All my programs and coaching, I help you with all of that. And I make it easy because believe me, I do not want to. I've had a cupboard full of supplements. and But what I do now is so much simpler. And that's why I love my super powders and super foods. Okay. Number seven, um, where your energy is coming from. Notice... Um, who what energy you're taking on from other people maybe like you know some people can steal your energy and they can leave you exhausted some people can give you their negative energy you feel stressed overwhelmed emotional exhausted headachey even you can actually pick up someone else's headache it's true because we are all energetic beings right and environment that's what i was going to talk about so whatever environment you have yourself in this greatly contributes to the balance of your body Absolutely. Negative, um, complaining, down, victim mode mentality of the people around you or your work or whatever, or yourself, is a very low vibration and you will feel tired, exhausted, uninspired, apathetic, all of that. It leaves you feeling blah. It also sets up your body for illness and disease because it's low frequency it's more susceptible to illness and disease when you're in a lower frequency, believe it or not. Because we are all energy. Our cells react at a, cell, so at a cellular level. It knows the feelings we're thinking, the thoughts we think, the words we say to ourselves, the people and the energy that are in our environment every day affect every cell of our body. Okay, so energetically, what's in your environment, positive or negative? What are you letting in? That means if you're empathetic or sensitive person, you feel other people's energy because it affects you. It gets in your energy system field and you soak it up like a sponge. 
and then it affects you. You feel those bad emotions, stress, anxiety, fear, ache, heartache, um, depression, anger, ang uh, headache even, physical symptoms. So there's certain energetic practices and intentions that are super easy that I teach in my program and courses that help you like shield yourself so that you don't tend to absorb those from other people. And it's also something you can do every day to help again. And there's little things you can do to swipe away the energy that you've come, that's come into your space from other people, your work in general, the collective energy that we're going through now, which is crazy and quite negative in many aspects, right? Um, we are all feeling that and picking it up. So if you're unaware of it, it really leaves you ex exhausted and tired and feeling anxious and worry and fearful. So when you're aware, this isn't me, I don't have to feel this way. And then have practices to like release the energy, let it go, swipe it away, and then protect, like set up good positive energy within yourself, right? That raises your vibration, helps you to feel more energetic, increases your immune system, helps you become like more of a stronger, happier, joyful person. And then you protect your energy. Oh my God, you feel so much better. You will feel so much better. Okay. And I do those practices and my um, coaching practices and my programs that I do live, right? All right. So that is seven things. So I talked to you today about seven things that most women are not doing. Now, don't take this as, oh my God, how am I going to fit all those things in? Right? Because remember, it's just, it's actually all encompassing, right? It is, you're going to do practices, little practices throughout the day that decrease your stress. You're going to think about, I get to have time for me. So I'm going to change my life. I'm going to work with the people in my life. I'm going to sit down and figure out how can I, not how, but actually I am putting time for myself into my day. So in my day, I now have time for myself. You put that time for yourself in, then you arrange the rest of your day around that. Just like going to work or brushing your teeth. And it doesn't have to be long. And um, loving boundaries. So that is when you are working on designing this, designing your life. Now you set up loving boundaries with people. And you may only have one or two that you have to think about, right? The spiritual soul practice, like I said, it can be 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening, or and at least to start, and then you can build on that. Personal growth, same thing. It's going to be just as you're driving, listening to, to personal growth things, um, reciting things to yourself, um, journaling every day, things like that that you can do. There's many, many things, and there's always finding what works for you, okay? So everybody's different, so you just have to find what works for you. Uh, and then, like I said, having the smoothie in the morning and adding some powder blends and some super powders to help you bring in more nutrients, minerals and, and essential fatty acids and amino acids and all those things that really help support your body, feed your glands that produce the hormones so that you balance your body better. And then energy and environment and just managing that, right? Um, letting go and learning the little techniques, taking a walk in nature, grounding on grass, doing some breathing, etc. All of those things. It is completely doable because all my clients end up doing them and rarely do they say they have a big problem with it because it's a decision to take fully care of yourself. You are worth it, you are deserving. And if you don't, what is the option, right? We know now how important health is. Health is number one because without it, there is nothing else. So this is your time to say yes to yourself. Reach out to me. You can find me on dianamarchand.com and contact me if you want to set up a call, if you want like some sort of coaching, but you're not sure what I do, how I work with people. There's price ranges guaranteed for every single person. Okay. That's how I work. I have something for every single person. I have some home study programs. I have just one-on sessions. I have four to six week, one-on-one. -on -one. I have group programs. I have something for everybody because truly, you know, I went through it. I know what it's like and I know what it was. I went through it without help or assistance. So that's why I love to guide through the women and help them through this. It makes a huge difference. All right. So much love to you and be free to join my Facebook community, Women Creating Healthy Lives on Facebook.
All right. So much love to you. Bye-bye.